Hello, Marcel here, and in this tutorial, we will go over the hair dynamics in Ornitrix plugin for Maya. So let's just jump right in and create a very basic scenario where we have some animated hairs. I'm just going to create a sphere, and on top of this, I'm going to add a basic fur hair groom, and I'm going to get rid of all of the operators inside the hair stack, just so that I end up with having guides. I'm going to make them a little bit smaller, right now they're 50 centimeters long, and these values are in real world units, and it isn't important to have a proper scale for dynamics, so I'm just going to set it to 14 centimeters long. And then from the Ornatrix shelf button, I'm going to use the dynamics operator button to add this dynamics node on top of my operator stack. As soon as I do this, I can start scrubbing the timeline and I can see that the hair is now animated. So adding dynamics is really as basic as this. You just throw this operator and right away by going forward in your timeline, you can animate and preview what the hair is going to look like. On the right in the attribute editor, we have our dynamics node set of attributes and these parameters control the way that the dynamics simulation behaves. At first we have the sub step count and the iteration count and these two values are controlling how the simulation is performed. So the sub step count will change the number of the sub steps that are performed during each frame of the simulation and the iteration count will break down each frame of the simulation into smaller frames and then simulate each one of those. So the general rule here is that the bigger values you have the more accurate and stable the simulation will be, but it is really up to you to play with these parameters and to find the values that work for you. So one of the most common things that you want to do in the hair simulation is to make the hair more rigid or more flowy depending on the type of things that you're simulating. For example, if you have fur, you probably do not want it to kind of droop down and fall like this all the time, and you probably would want it to kind of keep its shape. So to understand how to do this, you have to realize that the way that Ornatrix simulates hair is by first breaking it down into individual particles. Each strand is simulated by a chain of particles connected to each other and then these particles are grouped together to create the final hair effect. And some of these parameters control the way that these particles are generated. So you can use the spacing offset to space the particles further apart from each other and if you use a bigger value than zero you're going to have fewer particles per strand which will make them more springy. So for example let me set this to 0.4 and now as I simulate you see that the hairs all of a sudden do not fall as much and there become more springy. Another parameter that we can change to affect this is the stiffness parameter. The lower the stiffness, the more the hair is going to sort of droop down. And the higher you set the stiffness, the more the hair is going to kind of bounce around and keep its shape. So if I set the stiffness even higher, then I get the hair preserving its shape even more. One other parameter we can control here is the particle radius. By setting its value to zero, you're essentially telling Ornatrix to automatically detect and generate the particles for you. But again, you can set this parameter by yourself and this value is in centimeters. So you can set the particle radius to be some value like 0.4 and now the hairs will behave differently, so the particles become smaller than they used to be. And if I set this to a higher value, like 0.6, so this now becomes 6 millimeters per particle, the hair is behaving differently because the particles are larger and now they're trying to collide with each other. It is usually a good idea to set this value to zero and just let Ornatrix decide by itself the values that it wants, and this also frees you up from being concerned about this parameter in particular. Next, you can control the forces inside the simulation, and we have a couple of intrinsic forces. We have the gravity which is by default set to point down and the value of gravity is negative 998 and you can change this so if I change this for example to a value of almost zero then the hair will not fall and it's just going to sort of stay in one place and do nothing. If I change this to a positive value then the hair is going to actually fall upwards so you get the idea this is the default gravity. If you have your own gravity force field inside the scene you can probably set this to zero and then add it explicitly. One other parameter that is quite important here is the damping. By default, there is no damping and the hair just sort of falls down and keeps bouncing, but if you want to simulate something like a viscous fluid around the hair, such as a water simulation, you probably want this parameter to be increased. For example, if I set it to something like 40, you can see that the hair falls more slowly and kind of acts as if it was in some kind of medium. Damping is also a good way to improve the stability of the simulation should your hair be bouncing around too much or do some other things related to forces like flicker or something else. You can also add external forces to your hair simulation. So let me just go in and create a force here. And inside the field solvers, I'm just going to create an air node and I will move this air node out of the way just so we can see it, it's right here. Then I'm going to go 
back into hair and into my dynamics node and add this air node to the hair itself. Inside this air node, I'm just going to change its magnitude to a high value like 500 and I'm going to place it closer to the hair just so that it affects the hair because we have an attenuation value here. As I simulate, you can see that it now affects the hair in the area around of the object that it is set to affect. So if I place it in a different spot, you can see that this force is now applying to this hair. So you can add as many external force field as you want here and create some interesting effects. And like I said before, you can even add your own gravity node here. You don't really have to use the internal one, which is set to act on the hair by default. Then if we scroll down, we also have the collisions group here. And the first option here allows us to collide the hair with the distribution surface. So if I click this now and I simulate, you can see that the hair is no longer colliding with the distribution mesh. And this is a really a good option, especially if your character is animated and moving through the scene, as we will see later on in this tutorial. Aside from this, you can also add external collision meshes. So let me just show this by creating a sphere object. And then I'm going to go into the hair dynamics node again, and I'm going to add it using the add collision mesh button over here. So now as the hair drops down, it is colliding with the box object that we have just created and the hair just falls on it without going through it. These parts over here were initially inside the box, which is why we're still getting some penetration. But for example, if I move this box aside and let's say I animate it to go through the hair. So I'm going to set a key at frame zero, move it maybe at frame number 30. And I will also set the key here so that we get a moving box. Now, as the box moves through the hair, it is also moving the hair out of its way. So this is a great way to add obstacles or some other things inside your scene that you want to collide with the hair. And you can have as many collision objects as your simulation requires. Finally, just to demonstrate that the hair itself can be moving through the scene, let me animate the sphere. So I will set it to be here, for example. Then at some other frame, uh, like frame number 30, I'm going to move it and maybe add some rotation. And I'll go back and I'll just press the play button and we can see that the hair is now simulated and it is moving with our distribution object and it is also colliding with this box object over here. Just like with all the other operators in Ornatrix, you can go back into your hair operator stack and add some more operators on top. For example, I can go to Ornatrix shelf and add mesh from strands on top of this. Then maybe I'll add a render settings operator as well and I will change the thickness of the hair a little bit. And then finally, maybe I will cluster my hair a little bit by adding a guide cluster modifier. So this is my hair now and as I scrub through the hair is predictably being animated along with the rest of the scene and all of the operators and effects on top of my dynamics node are being applied after the simulation. Just like I did before I can also apply the dynamics mode on top of my hair and instead it will simulate individual hairs in that case instead of simulating the guides below in my hair stack. So in this case we have a static hair object and it is moving through the scene which is great, but in many cases you might also have a deforming character or some other dynamic object moving through the scene. And to demonstrate that scenario, let me just load a separate scene where we have a dancing character. So we're back with the scene where we have a character performing a little dance for us. And to demonstrate the simulation of shorter fur instead of longer hair in a more production realistic case, let me just add some hair onto this guy. I'm going to select the mesh for this character and then I'm going to add the same fur ball as I did before. And this scene has a pretty small scale so I have to go back and rescale the guides a little bit so let's leave it at about this length and I'm going to add a dynamics operator on top of this and right away just like before when I simulate the hair is now simulated with the character but the guides in this case are not given enough time to spring and instead they just follow the character as he is dancing so let's go back and go into the dynamics node settings to change some of these parameters I went and changed a few parameters on this character I increased the sub step count and the iteration count significantly because it is animated and we're getting a lot of movement between each subsequent frame we need to allow Ornatrix sufficient number of substeps to simulate the strands movements between this frame. Then I also increase the stiffness and spacing offset just like we did in sphere example previously. Finally, I also went in and used the collide with surface option to make sure that these hairs are colliding with the deforming character mesh. Now as I simulate this live, you can see that the results are much better. The hairs are no longer just sort of blindly following the character and we're getting some secondary motion in addition to the character's dancing moves. 
and also the hairs are no longer going through the character's body and overall behaving much better. So let's say at some point I am pretty happy with the results that I'm getting. The next thing I can do is record my simulation. Recording will allow you to bake the simulation down so that it doesn't have to be live anymore and when you scrub the timeline you will be able to scrub both forwards and backwards to be able to see the results of the simulation. To perform this recording first thing you need to do is make sure that you are happy with the starting frame and the ending frame of your current timeline because this is what is going to be recorded. In my particular scenario I have a start time of 1 and end time of 262 and this is the time range where my character is animated so this is what I want to record. Once I'm ready all I need to do is press the record active time range button and let Ornatrix scroll through my whole timeline and simulate the hair moving and record my hair animation. Once it has gone through all 262 of my frames, now the button displays clear recorded data text instead of the previous text to let me know that I have recorded data in my operator now. And as I scrub forwards and backwards, now you see that it is no longer simulating, which is evident by the speed of the playback of my animation here. And you see that the simulation has been recorded because if I zoom in on my hairs, they are reacting to the movement of my character. So if I wanted to go back and continue live simulation of my hairs and get rid of this recorded data, all I need to do is press this button again and we're back to having live simulation. All of this recorded data will be saved to your scene, which means that the scene file that you save, whether it is binary or ASCII format, is going to be significantly larger due to this new information present within it. But if you clear the recorded data, the scene is going to become smaller again. And just like before, I can go and start adding other operators on top of this one. So I'll add some hair and maybe I will add some render settings here just to make the hair a little bit thinner. So now that I have the hair on my character, I can now see the hair react to the simulation just like we did with the guides. And this hair is being generated from the simulated data. Even with the hair operator in place that we have now, we can always go back to my dynamics node, clear this data, maybe go and adjust some of the parameters of my operator and re-record the whole simulation all over again. So I hope you guys enjoyed this very introductory tutorial to the Dynamics Operator in Ornatrix for Maya and you will be able to use it to your advantage. Thank you very much for watching.